This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. That's L-I-B-R-I-V-O-X dot O-R-G. Recording by Christy Nowak. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paradiso, Canto 22-27. to Paradiso, Canto 22. Oppressed with stupor, I unto my guide turned like a little child who always runs for refuge there where he confideth most. And she, even as a mother who straightway gives comfort to her pale and breathless boy with voice whose wont it is to reassure him, said to me, Knowest thou not thou art in heaven? And knowest thou not that heaven is holy all, and what is done here cometh from good zeal? After what wise the singing would have changed thee, and I by smiling, thou canst now imagine, since that the cry has startled thee so much, in which, if thou hadst understood its prayers, already would be known to thee the vengeance which thou shalt look upon before thou diest. The sword above here smiteth not in haste, nor tardily, howe'er it seem to him who fearing or desiring waits for it. But turn thee round towards the others now, for very illustrious spirits shalt thou see if thou thy sight directest as I say. As it seemed good to her, mine eyes I turned, and saw a hundred spherules that together with mutual rays each other more embellished. I stood as one who in himself represses the point of his desire, and ventures not to question, he so feareth the too much. And now the largest and most luculent among those pearls came forward, that it might make my desire concerning it content. Within it then I heard, If thou couldst see, even as myself, the charity that burns among us, thy conceits would be expressed, but, that by waiting thou mayst not come late to the high end, I will make answer even unto the thought of which thou art so cherry. That mountain on whose slope Casino stands was frequented of old upon its summit by a deluded folk and ill-disposed. And I am he who first up thither bore the name of him who brought us upon the earth, the truth that so much sublimateth us. And such abundant grace upon me shown that all the neighboring towns I drew away from the impious worship that seduced the world. These other fires, each one of them, were men contemplative, enkindling by that heat which maketh holy flowers and fruits spring up. Here is Macarius, here is Romuldus, here are my brethren who within the cloisters their footsteps stayed and kept a steadfast heart. And I to him, the affection which thou showest speaking with me, and the good countenance which I behold and note in all your ardors, in me have so my confidence dilated as the sun doth the rose when it becomes as far unfolded as it hath the power therefore i pray and thou assure me father if i may so much grace receive that i may thee behold with countenance unveiled he thereupon brother thy high desire in the remotest fear shall be fulfilled where are fulfilled all others and my own there perfect is and ripened and complete every desire within that one alone is every part where it has always been for it is not in space nor turns on poles and unto it our stairway reaches up whence whence thus from out thy sight it steals away up to that height the patriarch jacob saw it extending its supernal part what time so thronged with angels it appeared to him but to ascend it now no one uplifts his feet from off the earth and now my rule below remaineth for mere waste of paper the walls that used of old to be an abbey are changed to dens of robbers and the cowls are sacks filled full of miserable flour but heavy usury is not taken up so much against god's pleasure as that fruit which maketh so insane the heart of monks for whatsoever hath the church in keeping is for the folk that ask it in god's name not for one's kindred or for something worse the flesh of mortals is so very soft that good beginnings down below suffice not from springing of the oak to bearing acorns peter began with neither gold nor silver and i with orison and abstinence and francis with humility his convent if thou lookest at each one's beginning and then regardest whither he has run thou shalt behold the white changed into brown. In verity the Jordan backward turned, and the sea fleeing when God willed were more a wonder to behold than succor here. 
Thus unto me he said, and then withdrew to his own band, and the band closed together, then, like a whirlwind, all was upward wrapped. The gentle lady urged me on behind them up o'er that stairway by a single sign, so did her virtue overcome my nature. Nor here below, where one goes up and down by natural law, was motion e'er so swift that it could be compared unto my wing. Reader, as I may unto that devout triumph return, on whose account I often for my transgressions weep and beat my breast, thou hadst not thrust thy finger in the fire and drawn it out again before I saw the sign that follows Taurus, and was in it. O oh, glorious stars, O oh, light impregnated with mighty virtue, from which I acknowledge all my genius, whatsoe'er it may be, with you was born, and hid himself with you, he who is father of all mortal life, when first I tasted of the Tuscan air, and then, when grace was freely given to me to enter the high wheel which turns around you, your region was allotted unto me. To you, devoutly, at this hour, my soul is sighing, that it virtue may acquire for the stern pass that draws it to itself. Thou art so near unto the last salvation, thus Beatrice began, thou oughtest now to have thine eyes unclouded and acute. And therefore, ere thou enter farther in, look down once more, and see how vast a world thou hast already put beneath thy feet, so that thy heart, as jocund as it may, present itself to the triumphant throng that comes rejoicing through this rounded ether. I with my sight returned through one and all the sevenfold spheres, and I beheld this globe such that I smiled at its ignoble semblance, and that opinion I approve as best which doth account at least, and he who thinks of something else may truly be called just. I saw the daughter of Latona shining without that shadow which to me was cause that once I had believed her rare and dense. The aspect of thy son Hyperion, here I sustained, and saw how moved themselves around and near him Maya and Dion. Thence there appeared the temperateness of Jove, twixt son and father, and to me was clear the change that of their whereabout they make, and all the seven made manifest to me how great they are, and eke how swift they are, and how they are in distant habitations. The threshing floor that maketh us so proud to me revolving with the eternal twins was all apparent made from hill to harbor. Then, to the beauteous eyes, mine eyes I turned. End of Canto 22 Canto 23 Even as a bird, mid the beloved leaves, quiet upon the nest of her sweet brood throughout the night that hideth all things from us, who, that she may behold their longed-for looks and find the food wherewith to nourish them in which to her grave labours grateful are anticipates the time on open spray and with an ardent longing waits the sun gazing intent as soon as breaks the dawn even thus my lady standing was erect and vigilant turned round towards the zone underneath which the sun displays less haste so that beholding her distraught and wistful such i became as he is who desiring for something yearns and hoping is appeased but brief the space from one when to the other of my awaiting say i and the seeing the welkin grow resplendent more and more and beatrice exclaimed behold the hosts of christ's triumphal march and all the fruit harvested by the rolling of these spheres it seemed to me her face was all aflame, and eyes she had so full of ecstasy that I must needs pass on without describing. As when in nights serene of the full moon smiles trivia among the nymphs eternal who paint the firmament through all its gulfs, saw I, above the myriads of lamps, a sun that one and all of them enkindled, e'en as our own doth the supernal sights and through the living light transparent shone the lucent substance so intensely clear into my sight that i sustained it not o oh, beatrice thou gentle guide and dear to me she said what overmasters thee a virtue is from which naught shields itself there are the wisdom and the omnipotence that oped the thoroughfares twixt heaven and earth for which there erst had been so long a yearning as fire from out a cloud unlocks itself, dilating so it finds not room therein, and down against its nature falls to earth, so did my mind among those elements become larger, issue from itself, and that which it became cannot remember. 
Open thine eyes and look at what I am. Thou hast beheld such things that strong enough hast thou become to tolerate my smile. I was as one who still retains the feeling of a forgotten vision and endeavors in vain to bring it back into his mind when I this invitation heard. Deserving of so much gratitude, it never fades out of the book that chronicles the past. If at this moment sounded all the tongues that Polyhymnia and her sisters made most lubrical with their delicious milk to aid me, to a thousandth of the truth it would not reach, singing the holy smile and how the holy aspect it illumined, and therefore, representing paradise, the sacred poem must perforce leap over, even as a man who finds his way cut off. But whoso thinketh of the ponderous theme, and of the mortal shoulder laden with it, should blame it not, if under this it tremble. It is no passage for a little boat, this which goes cleaving the audacious prow, nor for a pilot who would spare himself. Why doth my face so much enamour thee, that to the garden fair thou turnest not, which under the rays of Christ is blossoming? There is the rose in which the word divine became incarnate. There the lilies are, by whose perfume the good way was discovered. Thus Beatrice. And I, who to her counsels was wholly read, once again betook me unto the battle of the feeble brows. As in the sunshine, that unsullied streams through fractured cloud, ere now a meadow of flowers mine eyes with shadow covered o'er have seen, so troops of splendors manifold I saw, illumined from above with burning rays, beholding not the source of the effulgence. O power benignant that dost so imprint them, thou didst exalt thyself to give more scope there to mine eyes that were not strong enough. The name of that fair flower I e'er invoke morning and evening utterly enthralled my soul to gaze upon the greater fire. And when, in both mine eyes depicted, were the glory and greatness of the living star which there excelleth, as it here excelled, athwart the heavens a little torch descended, formed in a circle like a coronal, and cinctured it, and whirled itself about it. Whatever melody most sweet soundeth on earth and to itself most draws the soul would seem a cloud that, rent asunder, thunders. Compared unto the sounding of that lyre wherewith was crowned the sapphire beautiful which gives the clearest heaven its sapphire hue. I am angelic love that circle round the joy sublime which breathes from out the womb that was the hostelry of our desire, and I shall circle, Lady of Heaven, while thou followest thy son, and makest diviner the sphere supreme, because thou enterest there. Thus did the circulated melody seal itself up, and all the other lights were making to resound the name of Mary. The regal mantle of the volumes, all of that world which most fervid is, and living with breath of God and with his works and ways, extended over us its inner border, so very distant, that the semblance of it there, where I was not yet, appeared to me. Therefore mine eyes did not possess the power of following the incoronated flame which mounted upward near to its own seed. And as a little child that toward its mother stretches its arms when it the milk has taken, through impulse kindled into outward flame, each of those gleams of whiteness upward reached so with its summit that the deep affection they had for Mary was revealed to me. Thereafter they remained there in my sight, Regina Coeli singing with such sweetness that ne'er from me has the delight departed. Oh, what exuberance is garnered up within those richest coffers which had been good husbandmen for sowing here below. There they enjoy and live upon the treasure which was acquired while weeping in the exile of Babylon wherein the gold was left. There triumpheth beneath the exalted Son of God and Mary in his victory, both with the ancient council and the new, he who doth keep the keys of such a glory. End of Canto 23 Paradiso, Canto 24 O company elect to the great supper of the Lamb Benedite, who feedeth you so that forever full is your desire, if, by the grace of God, this man foretaste something of that which falleth from your table, or ever death prescribe to him the time, direct your mind to his immense desire, and him somewhat be due, Ye drinking are for ever at the font whence comes his thought. Thus Beatrice. And, 
Those souls beatified transform themselves to spheres on steadfast poles, flaming intensely in the guise of comets. And as the wheels in works of horologies revolve so that the first to the beholder motionless seems and the last one to fly, so in like manner did those carols, dancing in different measure, of their affluence give me the gauge as they were swift or slow. From that one which I noted of most beauty beheld I issue forth a fire so happy that none it left there of a greater brightness. And around Beatrice three several times it whirled itself with so divine a song my fantasy repeats it not to me. Therefore the pen skips, and I write it not, since our imagination for such folds, much more our speech, is of a tint too glaring. O oh, holy sister mine, who is implorest with such devotion, by thine ardent love thou dost unbind me from that beautiful sphere. Thereafter, having stopped, the blessed fire unto my lady did direct its breath, which spake in fashion as I here have said. And she, O oh, light eterna of the great man to whom our Lord delivered up the keys, he carried down of this miraculous joy, this one examine on points light and grave, as good beseemeth thee, about the faith by means of which thou on the sea didst walk. If he love well, and hope well, and believe, from thee tis hid not, for thou hast thy sight there where depicted everything is seen. But since this kingdom has made citizens by means of the true faith, to glorify it, tis well he have the chance to speak thereof. As Baccalaureate arms himself, and speaks not until the master doth propose the question to argue it, and not to terminate it, so did I arm myself with every reason, while she was speaking, that I might be ready for such a questioner and such profession. Say, thou good Christian, manifest thyself. What is the faith? Whereat I raised my brow unto that light wherefrom was this breathed forth. Then turned I round to Beatrice, and she prompt signals made to me that I should pour the water forth from my internal fountain. May grace that suffers me to make confession, began I, to the great centurion my cause conceptions all to be explicit. And I continued, As the truthful pen, father, of thy dear brother wrote of it, who put with thee Rome into the good way, Faith is the substance of the things we hope for, and evidence of those that are not seen, and this appears to me quiddity. Then heard I, Very rightly thou perceivest, if well thou understandest why he placed it with substances, and then with evidences. And I thereafterward, The things profound that here vouchsafe me their apparition unto all eyes below are so concealed, that they exist there only in belief, upon which is founded the high hope, and hence it takes the nature of a substance. And it behooveth us from this belief to reason without having other sight, and hence it has the nature of evidence. Then heard I, if whatever is acquired below by doctrine were thus understood, no sophist's subtlety would there find place. Thus was breathed forth from that enkindled love. Then added, Very well has been gone over already of this coin, the alloy and weight, but tell me if thou hast it in thy purse. And I, Yes, both so shining and so round that in its stamp there is no peradventure. Thereafter issued from the light profound that there resplendent was, this precious jewel, upon the which is every virtue founded, whence hast thou it? And I, the large outpouring of Holy Spirit which has been diffused upon the ancient parchments and the new, a syllogism is, which proved it to me with such acuteness that, compared therewith, all demonstration seems to me obtuse. And then I heard, the ancient and the new postulates that to thee are so conclusive why dost thou take them for the word divine? And I, the proofs, which show the truth to me, are the works subsequent, whereunto nature ne'er heated iron yet, nor anvil beat. T'was answered me, Say, who assureth thee that those works ever were, the thing itself that must be proved, naught else to thee affirms it? Were the world to Christianity converted, I said, withouten miracles this one is such, the rest are not its hundredth part. Because that poor and fasting thou didst enter into the field to sow there, the good plant which was a vine has become a thorn. This being finished, the high holy court resounded through the spheres, One God we praise, in melody that there above is chanted. 
and then that baron who from branch to branch examining had thus conducted me till the extremest leaves we were approaching again began the grace that dallying plays with thine intellect thy mouth has opened up to this point as it should opened be so that i do approve what forth emerged but now thou must express what thou believest and whence to thy belief it was presented o holy father spirit who beholdest what thou believest so that thou or camest towards the sepulchre more youthful feet began i thou dost wish me in this place the form to manifest of my prompt belief and likewise thou the cause thereof demandest and i respond in one god i believe sole and etane who moveth all the heavens with love and with desire himself unmoved and of such faith not only have i proofs physical and metaphysical but gives them likewise the truth that from this place rains down through moses through the prophets and the psalms through the evangel and through you who wrote after the fiery spirit sanctified you in persons three etane believe and these one essence i believe so one and trine they bear conjunction both with sunt and est with the profound condition and divine which now i touch upon doth stamp my mind oft times the doctrine evangelical this the beginning is this is the spark which afterwards dilates to vivid flame and like a star in heaven is sparkling in me even as a lord who hears what pleaseth him his servant straight embraces congratulating for the good news as soon as he is silent so giving me its benediction singing three times encircled me when i was silent the apostolic light at whose command i spoken had in speaking i so pleased him end of canto twenty four canto twenty five if e'er it happened that the poem sacred to which both heaven and earth have set their hand so that it many a year hath made me lean or come the cruelty that bars me out from the fair sheepfold where a lamb i slumbered an enemy to the wolves that wore upon it with other voice forthwith with other fleece poet will i return and at my font baptismal will i take the laurel crown because into the faith that maketh known all souls to god there entered i and then peter for her sake thus my brow encircled thereafterward towards us moved a light out of that band whence issued the first fruits which of his vicars christ behind him left and then my lady full of ecstasy said unto me look look behold the baron from whom below galatia is frequented in the same way as when a dove alights near his companion both of them pour forth circling about and murmuring their affection so one beheld i by the other grand prince glorified to be with welcome greeted lauding the food that there above is eaten but when their gratulations were complete silently corame each one stood still so incandescent it o'ercame my sight smiling thereafterwards said beatrice illustrious life by whom the benefactions of our basilica have been described make hope resound within this altitude thou knowest as oft thou dost personify it as jesus to the three gave greater clearness lift up thy head and make thyself assured for what comes hither from the mortal world must needs be ripened in our radiance this comfort came to me from the second fire wherefore mine eyes i lifted to the hills which bent them down before with too great weight since through his grace our emperor wills that thou shouldst find thee face to face before thy death in the most secret chamber with his counts so that the truth beholden of this court hope which below there rightfully enamours thereby thou strengthen in thyself and others say what it is and how is flowering with it thy mind and say from whence it came to thee thus did the second light again continue and the compassionate who piloted the plumage of my wings in such high flight did in reply anticipate me thus no child whatever the church militant of greater hope possesses as is written in that sun which irradiates all our band therefore it is conceded him from egypt to come into jerusalem to see or ever yet his warfare be completed 
the two remaining points, that not for knowledge have been demanded, but that he report how much this virtue unto thee is pleasing, to him I leave, for hard he will not find them, nor of self-praise, and let him answer them, and may the grace of God in this assist him. As a disciple, who his teacher follows, ready and willing, where he is expert, that his proficiency may be displayed, hope, said I, is the certain expectation of future glory, which is the effect of grace divine and merit precedent. For many stars this light comes unto me, but he instilled it first into my heart, who was chief singer unto the chief captain. Sperent in te, in the high theity, he saith, those who know thy name, and who knoweth not if he my faith possess. Thou didst instill me then with his instilling in the epistle, so that I am full, and upon others reign again your reign. While I was speaking, in the living bosom of that combustion quivered an effulgence, sudden and frequent in the guise of lightning. Then breathed, the love wherewith I am inflamed towards the virtue still which followed me unto the palm and issue of the field, wills that I breathe to thee, that thou delight in her, and grateful to me is thy telling whatever things hope promises to thee. And I, the ancient scriptures and the new, the mark establish, and this shows it to me of all the souls whom God hath made his friends. Isaiah saith that each one garmented in his own land shall be with twofold garments, and his own land is this delightful life. Thy brother too, far more explicitly, there where he treateth the robes of white, this revelation manifests to us. And first, and near the ending of these words, Sperent in te, from over us was heard, to which responsive answered all the carols. Thereafterward a light among them brightened, so that, if cancer one such crystal had, winter would have a month of one sole day. And, as uprises, goes, and enters the dance a winsome maiden, only to do honor to the new bride, and not from any failing, even thus did I behold the brightened splendor approach the two, who in a wheel revolved, as was beseeming to their ardent love. Into the song and music there it entered, and fixed on them my lady kept her look, even as a bride silent and motionless. This is the one who lay upon the breast of him our pelican, and this is he to the great office from the cross elected, my lady thus. But therefore none the more did move her sight from its attentive gaze before or afterward these words of hers. Even as a man who gazes and endeavors to see the eclipsing of the sun a little, and who by seeing sightless doth become, so I became before that latest fire, while it was said, Why dost thou daze thyself to see a thing which here hath no existence? Earth in the earth my body is, and shall be with all the others there, until our number with the eternal proposition tallies. With the two garments in the blessed cloister are the two lights alone that have ascended, shalt thou take back into your world. And at this utterance the flaming circle grew quiet, with the dulcet intermingling of sound that by the trinal breath was made, as to escape from danger or fatigue, the oars that erst were in the water beaten are all suspended at a whistle's sound. Ah, how much in my mind was I disturbed when I turned round to look on Beatrice, that her I could not see, although I was close at her side and in the happy world. End of Canto 25 Canto 26 While I was doubting for my vision, quenched out of the flame refulgent that had quenched it, issued a breathing that attentive made me, saying, while thou recoverest the sense of seeing which in me thou hast consumed, begin then and declare to what thy soul is aimed, and count it for a certainty. Sight is in thee bewildered, and not dead, because the lady, who through this divine region conducteth thee, has in her look the power the hand of Ananias had. I said, as pleaseth her, or soon or late, let the cure come to eyes that portals were when she with fire I ever burn with entered. The good that gives consent to this court, the Alpha and Omega is, of all the writing that love reads me, low or loud. The selfsame voice that taken had from me the terror of the sudden dazzlement, to speak still farther put it in my thought, and said, In verity with finer sieve behoveth thee to sift, thee it behoveth to say who aimed thy bow at such a target. And I, 
By philosophic arguments and by authority that hence descends, such love must needs imprint itself in me. For good, so far as good, when comprehended, doth straight enkindle love, and so much greater as more of goodness in itself it holds. Then, to that essence, whose in such advantage that every good which out of it is found is nothing but a ray of its own light, more than elsewhither, must the mind be moved of every one in loving, who discerns the truth in which this evidence is founded. Such truth he to my intellect reveals, who demonstrates to me the primal love of all the sempiternal substances. The voice reveals it of the truthful author, who says to Moses, speaking of himself, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Thou, to revealest to me, beginning the loud evangel that proclaims the secret of heaven to earth above all other edict. And I heard say, By human intellect, and by authority concordant with it, of all thy loves, reserve for God the highest. But say again, if other cords thou feelest, draw thee towards him, that thou mayst proclaim with how many teeth this love is biting thee. The holy purpose of the eagle of Christ not latent was, nay, rather I perceived whither he fain would my profession lead. Therefore I recommenced, all of those bites which have the power to turn the heart to God unto my charity have been concurrent. The being of the world and my own being, the death which he endured that I may live, and that which all the faithful hope, as I do, with the forementioned vivid consciousness have drawn me from the sea of love perverse, and of the right have placed me on the shore. The leaves wherewith embowered is all the garden of the eternal gardener, do I love as much as he has granted them of good. As soon as I had ceased, a song most sweet throughout the heaven resounded, and my lady said with the others, Holy, holy, holy! And as at some keen light one wakes from sleep by reason of the visual spirit that runs unto the splendor passed from coat to coat, and he who wakes abhorreth what he sees, so all unconscious is his sudden waking until the judgment cometh to his aid. So from before mine eyes did Beatrice chase every mote with radiance of her own that cast its light a thousand miles and more. Whence better after than before I saw, and in a kind of wonderment I asked about the fourth light that I saw with us. And said my lady, There within those rays gazes upon its maker the first soul that ever the first virtue did create. Even as the bough that downward bends its top at transit of the wind, and then is lifted by its own virtue, which inclines it upward, likewise did I. And while that she was speaking, being amazed, and then I was made bold by a desire to speak wherewith I burned. And I began, O apple, that mature alone hast been produced, O ancient father, to whom each wife is daughter and daughter-in-law, devoutly as I can I supplicate thee, that thou wouldst speak to me. Thou seest my wish, and I, to hear thee quickly, speak it not. Sometimes an animal, when covered, struggles so that his impulse needs must be apparent by reason of the rapage following it. And in like manner the primeval soul made clear to me athwart its covering how jubilant it was to give me pleasure, then breathed, Without thy uttering it to me, thine inclination better I discern than thou whatever thing is surest to thee, for I behold it in the truthful mirror, that of himself all things parhelion makes, and none makes him parhelion of itself. Thou fain wouldst hear how long ago God placed me within the lofty garden, where this lady unto so long a stairway thee disposed. And how long to mine eyes it was a pleasure, and of the great disdain the proper cause, and the language that I used and that I made. Now, son of mine, the tasting of the trees not in itself was cause of so great exile, but solely the o'erstepping of the bounds. There, whence thy lady moved Virgilius, four thousand and three hundred and two circuits made by the sun, this counsel I desired. And him I saw return to all the lights of his highway nine hundred times and thirty, whilst I upon the earth was tarrying. The language that I spake was quite extinct before that in the work interminable the people under Nimrod were employed. For never more result of reasoning, because of human pleasure that doth change obedient to the heavens, was durable. A natural action is it that man speaks. 
but whether thus or thus doth nature leave to your own art as seemeth best to you. Ere I descended to the infernal anguish, L was on earth the name of the chief good from whom comes all the joy that wraps me round. Eli he then was called, and that is proper because the use of men is like a leaf on bough which goeth, and another cometh. Upon the mount that highest o'er the wave rises was I, in life, or pure or sinful, from the first hour to that which is the second, as the sun changes quadrant to the sixth. End of Canto 26 Canto 27 Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. All paradise began, so that the melody inebriate made me. What I beheld seemed unto me a smile of the universe, for my inebriation found entrance through the hearing and the sight. O joy, O gladness inexpressible, O perfect life of love and peacefulness, O riches without hankering secure! Before mine eyes were standing the four torches enkindled, and the one that first had come began to make itself more luminous, and even such in semblance it became as Jupiter would become if he and Mars were birds, and they should interchange their feathers. That providence which here distributeth season and service in the blessed choir had silence upon every side imposed, when I heard say, If I my color change, marvel not at it, for while I am speaking thou shalt behold all these their color change. He who usurps upon the earth my place, my place, my place which vacant has become before the presence of the Son of God, has of my cemetery made a sewer of blood and stench, whereby the perverse one who fell from here below there is appeased. With the same color which, through sun adverse, painteth the clouds at evening or at morn, beheld I then the whole of heaven suffused, and as a modest woman, who abides sure of herself and at another's failing from listening only, timorous becomes, even thus did Beatrice change countenance, and I believe in heaven was such eclipse when suffered the supreme omnipotence. Thereafterward proceedeth forth his words with voice so much transmuted from itself, the very countenance was not more changed. The spouse of Christ has never nurtured been on blood of mine, of Linus and of Cletus, to be made use of in aquist of gold. But, in aquest of this delightful life, Sixtus and Pius, Urban and Calixtus, after much lamentation, shed their blood. Our purpose was not that on the right hand of our successor should in part be seated the Christian folk, in part upon the other, nor that the keys which were to me confided should e'er become an escutcheon on a banner that should wage war on those who are baptized." nor I be made the figure of a seal to privileges venal and mendacious whereat I often reddened and flash with fire. In garb of shepherds the rapacious wolves are seen from here above o'er all the pastures. O wrath of God, why dost thou slumber still? To drink our blood the Chaorcines and Gascons are making ready. O thou good beginning, unto how vile an end must thou needs fall! But the high providence, that with Scipio at Rome the glory of the world defended, will speedily bring aid, as I conceive, and thou, my son, who by thy mortal weight shalt down return again, open thy mouth. What I conceal not, do not thou conceal. As with its frozen vapors downward falls in flakes our atmosphere, what time the horn of the celestial goat doth touch the sun, Upward in such a ray saw I the ether become, and flaked with the triumphant vapors which there together with us had remained. My sight was following up their semblances, and followed till the medium, by excess the passing farther onward, took from it. Whereat the lady, who beheld me freed from gazing upward, said to me, Cast down thy sight, and see how far thou art turned round. Since the first time that I had downward looked, I saw that I had moved through the whole arc which the first climate makes from midst to end, so that I saw the mad track of Ulysses past Gades, and this side well nigh the shore whereon became Europa a sweet burden. And of this threshing floor the sight to me were more unveiled, but the sun was proceeding under my feet, a sign, and more removed. My mind enamoured, which is dallying at all times with my lady, to bring back to her mine eyes was more than ever ardent. 
and if or art or nature has made bait to catch the eyes and so possess the mind in human flesh or in its portraiture all joined together would appear as naught to the divine delight which shone upon me when to her smiling face i turned me round the virtue that her look endowed me with from the fair nest of leda tore me forth and up into the swiftest heaven impelled me its parts exceeding full of life and lofty are all so uniform i cannot say which beatrice selected for my place but she who was aware of my desire began the while she smiled so joyously that god seemed in her countenance to rejoice the nature of that motion which keeps quiet the centre and all the rest about it moves from hence begins as from its starting point and in this heaven there is no other where than in the mind divine wherein is kindled the love that turns it and the power it reigns within a circle light and love embrace it even as this doth the others and that precinct he who encircles it alone controls its motion is not by another meted but all the others measured are by this as ten is by the half and by the fifth and in what manner time in such a pot may have its roots and in the rest its leaves now unto thee can manifest be made o covetousness that mortals dust engulf beneath thee so that no one hath the power of drawing back his eyes from out thy waves full fairly blossoms in mankind the will but the uninterrupted rain converts into abortive wildings the true plums fidelity and innocence are found only in children afterwards they both take flight or ere the cheeks with down are covered one while he prattles still observes the fasts who when his tongue is loosed forthwith devours whatever food under whatever moon another while he prattles loves and listens unto his mother who when speech is perfect forthwith desires to see her in her grave even thus is swarthy made the skin so white in its first aspect of the daughter fair of him who brings the morn and leaves the night thou that it may not be a marvel to thee think that on earth there is no one who governs whence goes astray the human family ere january be unwintered wholly by the centesimal on earth neglected shall these supernal circles roar so loud the tempest that has been so long awaited shall whirl the poops about where are the prows so that the fleet shall run its course direct and the true fruit shall follow on the flower End of Canto twenty seven.